So let's keep moving. Um, the purpose of the two functions contains some difference because on the left, we choose numbers between 20 and 50. On the right, we select strings containing Laura, but really choose and select are kind of, the, they, they mean kind of the same thing here. So, so let's not worry too much about the purpose. Maybe I'm going to change select to choose just to make the two sides match better. Okay, let's move on to the definitions of the two functions. Here we see several inessential differences. Here's an inessential difference. On the left, when the input list is empty, we return the list, which is empty. On the right, we return empty. Well, that's just equivalent things expressed in two different ways. So I'm just going to, let's say, change the ln on the left to empty, just to make the two sides look more similar. Another thing that's uh, an essential difference between the two sides is that on the left, the input is called LON, and on the right, the input is called LOS. That kind of makes sense in the context of individual functions, but we would like to make the two functions more similar. So let's rename the uh, input to the same name. And I don't, I don't want to rename LOS to LON or LON to LOS. That would be confusing because, you know, after all, on one side is a list of numbers, on the other side is a list of strings. So I'm going to rename them to some other name. So I would like to rename LON to like LST might be a good name for a list. Um, by the way, here's a quick way to rename an input throughout your code. First, click check syntax. That might take a few seconds, but what that's going to do is to analyze your code to figure out all the relations between when some name is defined and when the name is used. So for example, now if I mouse over LON, the computer actually knows where LON is used, and it actually shows you these arrows to uh, indicate where LON is used. And if I right-click on LON, I could choose rename LON, and I can rename L into LST, and that's going to rename all the occurrences of LST. So that's kind of convenient. And I can do the same thing on the right-hand side. Again, I choose check syntax, and that takes a few seconds, and I'll be able to see all the places where LOS is used so that I could rename LOS to LST all at once. Okay, so that got rid of a couple of inessential differences, but we're not done yet. Uh, let's look at some other inessential differences. Well, on the left, we have a single count with three cases. On the right, we have two counts, one nested inside the other, and each of these two counts has two cases. Two cases. But that's not really an uh, essential difference because let's change the right-hand side to look more like the left-hand side. So uh, first, let's realize that the case that's not empty is the counts case. So instead of writing counts, we could just write else. In fact, because this else case is itself an inner count, we can merge the outer count and the inner count. So what I'm going to do is to now end up with three cases in a single count. Okay, that's a little more similar. What else is different? Well, there's one last difference. On the left, we have a call to less than equal. On the right, we have a call to string contains huh. On the left, the call to less than equal takes three inputs, 20, the first of the list, and 50. And the second of the three inputs is the first of the list. On the right, we have not three, but two inputs, Laura and the first of the list. So it makes sense that the first of the list will be subject to some test and that the test is going to be different between the two sides. But what's worrisome is that on the left-hand side, the test takes three inputs and the right-hand side, the test takes two inputs. What we really want is to have a test on both sides. And the only input that the test takes should be the first of the list. So in order to do that, in order to eliminate this inessential difference between taking three inputs and taking two inputs, what we should do is to introduce a helper function on each side. Here's what I mean. Suppose I have a function, um, 
let's use a short name for this function. Uh, let's call it uh, BW for short. I'm going to use a question mark because it turns out that we're going to want a function that returns a Boolean. It's just going to check if the given number is between 20 and 50, a single given number. So for example, um, 10 is not between 20 and 50, whereas 30 is. Suppose we have such a function. Well, it's not that hard to design the function. We basically have the definition already in the middle of that larger function. But we would then be able to use this helper function, bw ha, in the definition of between 20 and 50. Let's finish designing this function. Suppose we have number n. We just need to check if n is between 20 and 50. OK. So what we've done is we've moved part of the job of between 20 and 50 to this separate helper function so that in the main function, we're using a helper function that takes one and only one input. Let's double check that our test pass. Great. On the right hand side, I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to introduce a helper function for this part of the code. So it would be nice to see if we have a function, uh, uh, let's call it CL for contains lorem. Again, it's a very quick function to design. It's just going to, it's just going to check if the given string contains lorem. So for example, lorem ipsum contains lorem, whereas dorset does not. Okay, so if we had this function, then we will be able to use it in the body of all contains lorem. So let's use it. So instead of using string contains directly, I'm going to use CL hop. And then let's define CL hop here. And that's just going to use string contains. OK, again, let's double check that our test pass. OK, so now the two functions between 2050 and all contains lorem are really as similar as possible. We have BW ha and CL ha. That's a one word difference now between the criteria on the left hand side and the criteria on the right hand side. In fact, now the only essential difference, the only difference between the two sides is that on the left we have BW ha, on the right we have CL ha. So now we are ready to apply abstraction to between 2050 and all contains lorem. We're going to give a name to the difference between BW ha and CL ha. Now you could give a name to this like criterion or kind or uh, wantedness, something like that. Um, there's a slightly more, um, shall we say, technical term that uh, some people like to use, which is a predicate. A predicate is a function that returns true or false, a function that returns a Boolean. So we're going to use the word predicate because I like the word. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new function Let's call this new function uh, select, maybe. Um, and it's going to have a new input predicate. Okay. Now, the new input, uh, we can put the new input anywhere. Uh, I'm going to put the new input as the first input of the new function, but I'm still going to keep the old input list from the two existing functions. Okay. So select is a function that now takes one new input which represents the difference between BW ha and CL ha, and the old input LST, which is the input that the two old functions already have. Okay, and now all I have to do is to go through the two functions definitions and keep typing what's the same. Like here, it's the same. Here, it's the same. Everything's the same so far until I get to this point where on one side I have BW ha and the other side we have CL ha. So I'm just going to type predicate. 
because that's a difference. This name we give to the input that represents this difference. And then I keep going. Um, this is actually the same up to this point where on one hand we have a recursive call. On the other hand, we also have a recursive call. So here I'm going to make another recursive call on the rest of the list. And remember to pass the new input predicate to that recursive call. Okay. And I keep doing the same things between the two O sides until I get to the other recursive call. And then I'm going to make the same recursive call. Okay. Now we're not quite done with abstraction yet. There are a couple things that we have not done. Well, the first thing that we have not done is to redefine the old functions in terms of the new function. Now that we have this new function that does all this work of going through the list and picking out what satisfies the predicate, we should use select to redefine between 2050 and all contains lore. How do we define between 2050? Well, remember we used predicate to represent the difference between BW ha huh and CL ha. Huh? So here on the left hand side, the predicate is BW ha. Huh? All I have to do is to give BW ha huh to select along with the old input OST. And similarly on the right hand side, I'm going to give CL ha huh to OST. Let's make sure that our tests still pass. We are now testing select by testing between 2050 and testing select by testing all contains more. Great, but we're not quite done yet because this new function select doesn't yet have a signature and it also doesn't yet have a purpose. It has tests because we're already testing it through testing between 2050 and testing all contents more, but we really need to have a signature for this function select, and we also need a purpose. Okay, the purpose is relatively simple to write. We could say it chooses uh, elements that satisfy the given predicate, something like that. Okay, and I'm, when I write that, I'm referring to the old purposes of the two concrete functions. What about the signature? Well, to write the signature, we can look at the old signatures. On one hand, we have list of number to list of number. On the other hand, we have list of string to list of string. So the only difference between the two older signatures is that we have list of number on one hand, we have this list of string on the other. So instead of number or string, let's use X, which is kind of an input to the signature. Remember an X could be a number or a string or some other day definition. Now we have a function select that can apply not just to a list of numbers or a list of strings, but you know, a list of patterns, a list of booleans, a list of images, a list of whatever. X is kind of an input to this signature. X is a data definition. It could be number, it could be string, it could be image, it could be boolean, it could be posin. It's an input to this signature. And it's important that we write this signature so that we know that we could use select both to select from a list of numbers and to select from a list of strings and to also select from a list of other things in the future. Let's make it clear that X is an input to this signature. Sometimes you're just gonna see a signature like this and you just kind of have to guess that X is an input that's a data definition. That's not so hard to guess because usually it's something called X or Y or, or, or some uh, short uh, letter like that. Uh, but if we want to make it even clearer, sometimes you're going to see us and the textbook writing something like this. We're going to put X in curly braces to mean it's an input to this signature. Sometimes you're gonna see us writing X in square brackets, which I know is kind of confusing because we're using square brackets to, to do so many things nowadays, but this is sometimes what the textbook does, okay? In any case, what's important is to understand that when we write 
X in brackets or X in curly braces or X inside some other uh, data definition like list of X, that X could be any data definition. It could be number, it could be string and select is going to work with both of them or all of them, not just number and string, but other data definitions as well. We're not done with the signature of select though, because select takes two inputs, predicate and list. And here we only have one input for select. We only have the list. We have not added the new input predicate to the signature of select yet. So what kind of thing is predicate? Well, it's a function and it's a function that takes on the left hand side, a number and returns a Boolean. And on the right hand side, a string and returns a Boolean. More generally, select needs a function that takes an X and returns a Boolean. So that's what we're gonna put in the signature of select. Now we have a signature that's complete. It says that the first input to select is an X to Boolean function and the second input is a list of x. This x, again, is not an input to the function select, rather it's an input to the signature of the function select. So if we have any x, like number or string, we could give that to the signature to find out that select has a signature number to boolean, list of number to list of number. And that's how we're using it here in the definition of between 20 and 50 now. Whereas if we pass the same signature a different input x like string, then we also discover that select has a signature string to boolean, list of string to list of string. And that's how we're using select in the right hand side in the new definition of all contains lore. Select is quite useful. For example, suppose we want to take a list of numbers and pick out the even numbers. Well, there's already a function, as you know, called even half that will take a number like 34 and tell you that it's even or 35 will tell you it's not even. So if we have a list of numbers like 34, 35, I don't know, these, this list of numbers and we want to pick out just the even numbers, we could give even half to select. Similarly, Suppose that we want to take a list of strings and pick out those strings that are uppercase. Well, there's a function, it turns out, string uppercase ha huh, that will tell if a single string given is uppercase. So here's an uppercase string, for example, and here is a non-uppercase string. So if you have a list of strings, maybe some are all uppercase and some are not, we can pick out those elements that are uppercase by feeding that list to string uppercase this huh, and select like this. And note that we have not written any new functions, we're just using existing functions using the abstraction select that we just designed. Now, if we want to do something that's a little bit more specific, then we might need to write a new helper function. So for example, let's say I want to pick out some numbers from a given list of numbers, not between 20 and 50, but let's say between zero and 100. I will have to write a new helper function. Let's call this uh, uh, BW, uh, let's call it BX instead, I'm out of letters. So let's write a function because we don't have one built in that would check if some given number is between zero and 100. For example, 10 is between zero and 100, but 200 is not between zero and 100. Okay, this is not a part function to write. Let's get the name correct. Let's make the function defined like this. So once we have this helper function, we don't have to do the rest of the work of going through a list and following the list processing template or anything like that. We can use select and bx to go through a list and pick out 
those numbers that are between 0 and 100. And if we want to uh, pick out numbers between, I don't know, 50 and 2000, we would design another number to Boolean function and give that function as the predicate to select. That starts to get bothersome 